This is WVTM 13. Breaking news is happening right now. It's been a long weather day around our area and we are not done yet. Here's several live looks around central Alabama at all of the rain tonight. Uh, the rain moving out of downtown Birmingham right now, but you can see in other places still pretty wet tonight. OK, folks, uh, get to your safe place. Um, we've got a definite tornado. Wow, terrifying images coming out of Louisiana. A tornado touching down near New Orleans and along the Mississippi coast. The system in our area is the same system that produced this tornado. Good evening, I'm Guy Rawlings. And I'm Sherry Falk. And we have been on top of these storms all day long. Tonight, we have team coverage from across central Alabama. Chip Scarborough is in Tuscaloosa, Magdala Luzon in Moundville, and meteorologist Harmony Mendoza is in the studio. But we begin with Chief Meteorologist Jerry Tracy. A possible tornado on the ground in Shelby County just about an hour ago, Jerry. Exactly, Guy. We don't have any confirmation of that yet, but we did see the drop off in correlation coefficient. So at least for two or three minutes, it likely was on the ground. Right now you're looking at the WVTM 13 live Doppler and things have changed a lot in the last 30 minutes. This line here is becoming the main player. I think after that goes through, the rain becomes much less ahead of it, though. There's still going to be torrential rains with flooding issues and that kind of thing. Right now it is coming down extremely hard right through Chelsea, further south to Collier, down in the Chilton County. Intense downpours here. Still a severe thunderstorm warning for eastern sections of Shelby County and still a lot of lightning and thunder with this as it moves on east. Now the downpours are impressive. They have shifted east of Birmingham. There'll still be some rain and a few downpours behind it, but this is the main thing. Trustful, you're right in the heart of it now and you're getting hit hard with some extremely heavy downpours. Further south, the rain beginning to left up west of uh, Grants Mill Road. Mountain Brook, not as wet as it was a short time ago, but it is still raining lightly. Across the area now, we're looking at the uh, tornado watch slowly going away. Harmony. Yes, Jerry, that tornado watch is starting to diminish uh, one at a time, and, and we'll continue to focus on that uh, for just a moment because it was being updated. That's why it was a blank screen, by the way, Jerry, uh, because they were updating it, and uh, it still goes until 11 o'clock, so we've got one more hour. Jefferson County, Blunt County, St. Clair County, and Shelby County underneath that tornado watch. But there were some reports earlier today that we want to touch on. Still flooding widespread in areas of Jefferson and Tuscaloosa County, but uh, Moundville did receive two separate reports of potential structural damage, uh, multiple structures there near the intersection of County Road 52 and Highway 69. And of course, we started the top of the show by talking about the tornadoes confirmed in Louisiana. So still underneath that watch until 11 p.m. tonight. We'll be on the weather watch as well. Back to you. All right, Harmony, let's go outside to show you what's exactly going on in our area. Yeah, WVTM 13's Brittany Decker is in Vestavia Hills tonight. Britt, what are you seeing where you are? Hey guys, we are um, in Vestavia Hills driving down 31. It was absolutely pouring rain, really tough to drive out there on the roads. Landed here at Vestavia Bowl. We know this is an area that's really prone to flooding and it's really kind of wild because we were here just a few moments ago and I said, hey, it's looking pretty good. And just in the matter of moments, we're seeing the, the parking lot here pond up. The drain is getting clogged and the parking lot is filling up extremely fast here. So I do expect it to be flooded here very soon. And again, this just happened within the matter of minutes. They do have a lot of sandbags here in the local businesses. They're used to a lot of rain um, flooding in this area when big storms like this happen. There's a, a sandbags blocking the doors. So hopefully the water doesn't get too close uh, to the front door here. I did look at their social media pages. They had leagues here tonight. They closed at 830 just to make sure everybody did get out safe. Uh, we do hear some some reports of some possible flooding or some cars submerged on 31. Not confirmed of what we have seen as of yet, but we're going to go check that out to see if that is happening at this time. We'll get back to you and let you know. Live in Vestavia Hills, I'm Brittany Decker. Guys, back. All right, Britt. Well, damage elsewhere in our area, particularly to our west. Yeah, we have crews in Tuscaloosa and Moundville tonight. We want to begin with Magdala Lusant, who is in Hale County right now. Magdala, there are parts of the city there that are heavily damaged. Yeah, Sherry, we're on Highway 69. This is where we saw most of the damage, just right behind my right shoulder here. You can see this tree that toppled over and some roofing from somewhere landed on top of it. Uh, lots of um, damage around here. Further to the right, you will see a uh, 
roof beam that fell over here too. Lots of debris from somewhere. We're not sure where. Um, it is pretty dark out here, so we're trying to be careful with where we're walking too. But let's get right to the video of, uh, of the other structure damage we saw throughout uh, Highway 69. Most of it is roof damage. Uh, traffic was at a standstill too at some point. Alabama Power came out here to clear the down power lines. Eventually, um, the road opened back up for those drivers and they got to wherever they needed to. Now, one business owner in this area did come out to check out his business. Um, luckily, he told me no one was inside at the time, but he did get some roof damage as well. We did speak with the Hale County EMA director. Here's what he told us. He gives us an update on what happened throughout the county this evening. We've had about 20 homes damaged here in Malville, uh, just a little bit south of Malville. Uh, a lot of uh, homes have trees on them. Uh, we had three different people uh, that couldn't get out of their homes. All those have been freed and we didn't have any injuries. And that's certainly good news to hear that there were no injuries here in Hell County. Um, we do know, too, that uh, south of the county, there was damage there. So shortly after our interview, the EMA director had to rush and go down to that part. Um, overall, 14 roads were closed, but all of those roads have been reopened now. For now, live in Hale County, I'm Magdala Lusant, WVTM 13. All right, back now to Shelby County, where we're told that a water rescue is underway at this moment. There's a tow truck with that car that we're told was submerged in the water there. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where that stake and shake is. I believe it's right by the, uh, the yeah, this is on Montgomery Highway. There used to be a Whole Foods mall in that area right there. It's no longer a Whole Foods, but there are a lot of shopping uh, areas in or shopping uh, opportunities in that area right by uh, the Galleria Mall. Yeah, I believe this is that plaza um, where there is a PetSmart yeah. and also Best Buy right there. I know the other morning, a few days ago when we had some flooding, I received some pictures from this same exact area where the water was pretty high. Uh, we don't know if anybody was injured. We do know that the person in that car was rescued. Uh, of course, we're going to continue to follow this and other areas that have been um, impacted by flooding for the rest of the evening. Speaking of which, Tuscaloosa. Yeah, and Tuscaloosa, we know, impacted by the heavy downpours tonight. Uh, some of the flash flooding was there. WVTM 13's Chip Scarborough live in downtown Tuscaloosa tonight to show us what people there have been dealing with, Chip. Well, Guy and Sherry, right after I last saw you at 630 tonight, it started raining very heavily here in downtown Tuscaloosa, and it just kept on raining and kept on raining. Take a look at this video and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is what people living in one apartment complex dealt with earlier tonight. Daniel Thaxton shot this video of flooding along Helen Keller Boulevard. This is just east of the University of Alabama campus. Then not far from there, McFarland Boulevard was flooded near University Boulevard and DCH Regional Medical Center. If you live in Tuscaloosa, you know this area floods almost every time there is heavy rain for a long period of time. And if you were in downtown Tuscaloosa tonight, you likely had difficulty moving about without getting completely soaked. We saw several heavy downpours here starting about 7 o'clock tonight. At this time, no apparent flooding, though, in the downtown Tuscaloosa area. The other big story today was just the wind. It was really strong at times, especially this afternoon. Going to take some time here in West Alabama for things to dry out. In fact, it's still raining a little bit here in downtown now. That is the latest live in Government Plaza in downtown Tuscaloosa tonight. Chip Scarborough, WVTM 13. And the same system passing through our area hit Mississippi earlier in the day. The Mississippi State campus in Starkville does have some damage. Several trees were knocked over, some landing on top of cars, as you see there. In Madison, just outside Jackson, a mother thankful her children are OK tonight. Saritha Weathers left work to check on them after they got home from school. When she got home, she found her roof blown off. The kids nowhere to be found. Luckily, a neighbor brought the kids to their house before the storm hit. Like the, the poles in it, the big old pole that hold the roof up, all that it felt like. If my kids was in there by themselves, ain't no way my kids would have stayed, came out. Uh, I think they would have been hurt, and I would have been so devastated. Well, this is the video that everybody is talking about. Look at this. That truck getting tossed around by a tornado in Texas. Watch it. It literally is getting pushed on its side. And then all of a sudden it's back upright and the person eventually just drives away incredibly. Well, that tornado, one of several to hit parts of Texas yesterday, at least one person is dead from the same storm system. Dozens more were hurt. Several homes and businesses 
are damaged. In southeast Texas, a mother and her two year old son are safe tonight. Both pulled from debris after a possible tornado hit the small town of Beasley. This is outside of Houston. The storm flipped and ripped apart their mobile home. Unfortunately, uh, both should be OK. But just west of Dallas, an elementary school hit by the storm. Students and staff were inside at the time. Thankfully, no one was hurt. We're in the direct path, uh, the major area where uh, we received damage, and it's just a miracle. And uh, I was one of the first responders here. Emotional time there. We want to you every we want everyone to stay safe as the storm passes through. The easiest way to do that is to have our app on your phone or tablet. Turn the notifications on. We'll let you know the second a watcher warning is issued. Well, breaking news tonight. Residents in Irondale voted yes to a property tax increase. The additional money will help pay for improvements at city parks, facilities and on the roads. It begins next year and will run through 2029. Happening right now, Birmingham Fire is working to figure out what caused this fire at an abandoned home on 14th Court North. The strong wind pushed those flames right onto three other homes this morning. Luckily, everyone inside was able to get out safely. At least one of those homes was destroyed and it belonged to these people, Yolanda and Larry Nickerson. They were asleep when the fire spread into their home. Thankfully, they were not hurt. Larry says this hurts because it was his grandfather's home and he was going to pass it down to his children. That's the most important thing. We are alive. We know that everything can be replaced. But in that moment, you know, looking at it, you know, just our house just going up in flames, thinking about everything that's in there, everything sentimental. It just went through my mind quickly. But then after the fact, I can just only thank God that we are alive and that he woke me up at that moment. There is a GoFundMe for this family. You can find that information on how to donate on our app or at WVTM13.com.